a minute or now. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Chris Schwede and I'm coming to you from New Orleans, Louisiana. And um, it's always interesting, um, you know, to be able to jump on these calls and talk about, you know, what it takes to go out there and win in a big way, which I would say is more important, um, a positive mental attitude and your mindset over anything else. And, and, and the reason why that is, is because thoughts are things, right? Um, had a, uh, this is funny, so I have to make fun of myself. So I'm on the phone with my brother who's in town from Colorado, who, by the way, a year ago this month was in a terrible motorbike accident. The fact that he's alive is absolutely a miracle. Split his pelvis in half, like had to have hip replacements and all that at 40. He's now 44 years old and all that stuff. I mean, his, his ball of his hip was totally destroyed. Um, I mean, just absolute internal bleeding, all that stuff. They didn't know if he was going to make it uh, through the whole process. And then he was in town surfing out on the boat this weekend with me, you know, a year later. And, you know, it's funny because there was other people on the boat that are sitting there going, I can't believe he's, you know, he's doing this stuff. And, you know, our mindset and what we believe and what we tell ourselves allows us to be able to do far more things than what we, um, than many times what we believe is possible. And um, oh, so I was on the phone with them. This is making fun of myself to go meet uh, with some friends of ours that were cooking a bunch of crabs. So I have like a big backpack on. I don't know what my phone is. It's telling me something weird. All right. Um, so at any rate, I have a backpack, big old backpack and stuff. And I'm on the phone I'm, and he, and I'm like, so what house is it? And he's like, it's, I'm parked a, a house past the one. I'm like, so the pink one, right? And he's like, yeah, well, uh, Greg's going to come open the gate and you can come to get, I said, I'll just walk through the house. So I walk in this house and it's the wrong house and there's a family in there and I'm like, Hey, and I'm like, and my buddy's behind me and he turns around and he walks out. He's like, we're in the wrong house. And there's little kids running around. I'm like, where's Shannon? And they're like, this is the wrong. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just walked in your house. <laughs> and I walked in the wrong house, um, which was really interesting. So I shared that to share this, like guys, you get, you got to, sometimes we're afraid to go out and talk to people in the business because of what people think about you, right? Like I could have been mortified and beat myself up and oh my gosh and freaked out or whatever, but guess what? I laughed at myself and told the story, called my wife. Can you believe I walked into the, I mean, it was craziness. I'm imagining somebody, some crazy person walking into my house. Like what would you do? Like I could have been shot or something crazy, but at any rate, it was, um, it was funny. So, um, so another thing like this weekend, and I, I did a video a few weeks back that I was like, we talk about we're either growing or we're dying, right? Like you're either getting better, getting stronger, or you're not. And you know, you, what you feel is like you're dying or what you feel is like you're no longer, um, Whenever, like whenever we talk about six basic human needs, but whenever one of your human needs are out of balance, you feel incomplete and don't necessarily know what it is. Like you might not know, know exactly what's going on, but what it boils down to is that you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you feel not great, right? So we've been wakeboarding and I've been actually doing a lot more surfing because I was at a point where I could grow surfing, but when it comes to wakeboarding, like I can already do a bunch of tricks, but to go other things or new things is scary because I could get hurt. You know, I am 46 years old now. And when you're going 20 something miles, 23 miles an hour behind the boat and you take a wrong, you know, if you catch an edge or something, 
you stop like you're hitting a wall and it doesn't necessarily feel good. Um, I think uh, Sean and Kim were out on the boat when we had, you know, a guy that is pretty much a professional. Like the guy was amazing, but he got like a concussion, you know, while he was riding and stuff like that. So I've been a little apprehensive about trying new things, but again, you're either growing or you're dying. So this weekend I was determined I'm going to learn a new trick, which is it's like a flip with a, where you do a, a 180 at the end and you land the opposite way. And it's funny. I just went through the mechanics and I just kept doing it. And, and got, I didn't get it by the way, but I tried about 10 or more times and it got to where I was landing it perfectly, but I was slipping out when I, when I get there. And I'm sharing this because it's the, the, original it was way harder to talk myself into trying it than it was to actually do it right like and and i'm sharing that because in in our businesses we put up these barriers or we put up these stories or we tell ourselves on how things are going to be harder than what they are or oh, i'm going to experience rejection or i'm going to experience this or experience that and it's then it's really not real in fact the buildup to it is, is normally way worse than if you just stepped out and did it. And I remember when I was like, I'm going to do this. There was a little bit of apprehension of, all right, how am I going to do this? And, and guys, this is the beautiful part in this business. You don't take a bad fall. Like if somebody says no, guess what? They weren't in your business before they weren't a customer before nothing changed nothing but we build it up to where something dramatic or whatever is going to happen like you're going to die if they say no like now if if you literally drop dead when somebody said no then it might make sense to not step out of your comfort zone and go talk to somebody but nothing really changes but if they say yes something could change so with that basically all no's are created equal, but all yeses aren't. The thing is, all no's are created equal. Every no, every person that says no, guess what? Nothing changed. Imagine, and just with the firepower I see on the screen that I have right now, if any one of these people said yes to you in your business, you would be place. In fact, I mean, there's some naughty unmuters out there. Naughty unmuters. All right. Um, so I didn't even press mute all today. That was amazing. And we had all these people muted. You guys are getting good at this. So all no's are created equal, but all yeses are not. The thing is, is that you don't know what person could come into your business and absolutely make a dramatic change in, in your whole business. And it's funny, my mom taught me something or said something years ago. Um, she's been gone now for 10 years, but years ago she told me something and she didn't really understand network marketing. She didn't really know, but she just felt like she got the word that she, I mean, I remember her telling me, she goes, Chris, you're one person away from greatness. You're one person away from greatness. Now, every single one of you all in your business, I could tell you, you're one person away from a whole nother level of what is possible. Imagine bringing in a, a Mark or Judy Willitson. Imagine bringing in, you know, um, one of these superstars from Australia that take off. Imagine bringing in a, 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 a Maria Jambroni or a, a Lisa Yan or a, or a, you know, a Ricky Duran, a Sean and Kim, a Donna, a, a, you know, imagine bringing in one of these rock stars into your business and they go out and they bring in a hundred, 200,000, a million dollars in volume. What does your business look like? Guys, our comp plan is one of the only comp plans I've ever looked at in the industry that you can literally have $6,000 outside of your other a big leg and have a, a 
over a $10,000 a month income. What does that mean? You could literally bring in one superstar. You could bring in one person and then you just have enough volume outside of that organization. And let's say for instance, you know, that's like $6,000. If you look at the split and you're a, a platinum in our company, well, the caps on platinum is you'd be making $12,500 a month by having one huge organization with $6,000 outside of it. Guys, there's not a, a, a company in the industry where I've ever seen where if you didn't have some kind of like serious balance, you were not making a six figure income in that company period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. A lot of times you have to have multiple leaders to be able to make a six figure income. And in our company, you can literally bring in one person that could totally change your life. And I'm sharing that because what is the fear that's holding you back from going out and talking to people? So I was talking to my buddy, Mike, and my, and my other friend, um, Robbie, this weekend. I think it was Saturday morning, right before we started the, the, the training. And my buddy was telling me about how he just went to a friend of ours funeral that the guy had his house paid off. He didn't have a drug or drinking problem and the dude hangs himself. He's been in a relationship for a long time. Wasn't having problems with his significant other, no problems, whatever, no, no idea that he was going to hang himself. And the only thing they can figure was it was what's going on with COVID. And, and right now, if we just look at what's going on out there in this world, that basically they are creating an environment where people are feeling anxiety and separation and all of that. So I'm sharing this because my buddy is a pretty happy dude. Like, in fact, his, in the name of his, his um, lawn care business is Happy Grass. And he has the coolest, you know, like stuff on the side. It's like all these animals and stuff um cutting the grass crickets and all that on on wrapped on his trailer and all that fun guy and then he's sharing you know how he's like dude like at first it wasn't really affecting me he goes but this lockdown it, it's causing people to act weird and he goes so i don't even enjoy going places and stuff and i'm starting to get anxiety myself and i'm a fairly happy person and 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 people right now guys they're not talking about it, but the suicide rate is, is going through the roof. People are having more anxiety and depression and all this other stuff. And it's affecting a lot of people. And, you know, what I love about this industry is that we can, we're recession proof. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care what company you are. I don't care whatever this has affected people's businesses, period. And if you see other people going, oh my gosh, we're growing so much because of this, a lot of people lie. So in fact, when I got started in this industry, like what I found is that people normally, and, and I'm, I'm glad we don't do this, but in other companies I've seen where people will say, I'm making this much a month. And they say their highest month ever, and that's what they're making a month. And it's not true. So guys, in, in this business, in this, in, the truth is always good enough. And you don't have to hype things bigger than what they are because this is, this, you can say things that are positives. Like if somebody says, so how have you been doing in the business? Oh my gosh, I mean, I have been doing amazing. Now guys, the word amazing can be used in many different ways. Like, there are crazy people that you could say, oh my gosh, that person is freaking amazing to deal with, right? That are, and they're nuts. And it could also be a, a good thing, right? So amazing is a word that you can use that you're not lying. Like you could be, oh my God, it's amazing that people don't answer the phone when I, when I prospect them. It's amazing that, I mean, it's stuff that happens, right? So, but it's a matter of being truthful 
because the truth is always good enough. And I'm just saying that because I'm watching other networkers talk about whatever. And I also really know I've talked to other leaders in the same company and they're like, yeah, we're all dealing with the same thing. I mean, like the fact that we still have businesses is, a, is an amazing thing, right? Because a lot of people have been put under. I'm watching, if you go downtown or in the quarter, companies that have been around for 30 plus years are boarded up, enclosed. People whose livelihoods have, you know, been in all these other places. And I'm sharing that not to be a, a procrastinator of doom or to go, oh my God, the world sucks and all that other kind of stuff. What I'm saying this for is that you guys, based on your mindset, based on the way that you make people feel when you talk to them, can be the answer to their prayers. You have to understand that what we have is absolutely mind blowing on what it's doing for people. If you were not on the opportunity Zoom that we did 30 minutes ago, guys, like I was wanting to cry being on the, the thing, hearing what these women and, and what this, this product and this company has done for them. Guys, every Monday night, every, two, every Wednesday night, we're doing these opportunity Zooms. If you're not putting prospects on these Zooms, shame on you. They're literally under 30 minutes long. They're under 30 minutes long. They're action packed. They're boom, 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 boom. And all you have to do in this business is the four steps. And the fourth step is connecting them to other people. And that's where these Zooms are so incredible to be able to do that. But, you know, people, they get started in this industry and they just expect it. It's funny, people work 40 hours a week for 40 years to retire off of 40% of what they couldn't live off of for the 40 years, right? And they're excited. Oh my gosh, I get to retire. And then I have to go get another job or, or whatever to be able to make ends meet. Do you know the numbers are less than, I forgot what the percentage is, but most people at age 65 don't even have 250 bucks in the bank. Like they're living paycheck to paycheck and their family members are ending up taking care of them. The percentages are ridiculous. And guys, we can be the change agents. We can be the people to go out there and help them. Yes, they're on this same exact Zoom link. You know, so guys, we have been, we've been operating like, for instance, this call was our Monday night team call that we decided basically as a group that we're going to share it with the entire company. And anybody can jump on these. Our Saturday morning trainings are done by different leaders in the team. And they're open to whoever wants to get on them. There is no, oh, this is our team and we're doing this and we're doing that. If you get value from it or if you hear something that doesn't align with what your team is doing and whatever, then just take whatever nuggets you can take that are going to help move you forward. But don't get all sidetracked and confused and think that whatever, like if your team has a system that they're using, awesome, do that. But the way that I look at this business is it's almost like that combination lock. And you turn it one way and you get to the number and then you have to turn it the other way and you have to pass it up, right? And then you have to go. If you don't have all three numbers right, the lock doesn't open. Well, guys, many of you all have, have dreams. And the thing is, is if you don't have all the numbers to the combination to unlock those dreams, you're never going to get there. So it makes sense to plug in to different trainings. If I can go get on different trainings for different teams, I do because you never know what nugget. As soon as you think that you know everything, first off, you don't know anything because if you knew anything, you wouldn't think that you know everything. You have to be open to learning at all times. So what was I doing prior to getting on the calls? I was watching trainings from the a and the a -N -N -T, I can never even say that. But watching different stuff from that, I, I listened many times before on a Monday night call. I might, guy, I might go open up some videos from Tom Big Al Schreider and watch some of them. Why is that? Because Tom Schreider is so simplistic in his messaging that it's information. If I'm going to share with people, it's information that anybody can do. But see, people get started in this industry 
and, and, and they'll work 40 years on their job with the little bump and runs, right? Where you get like, a, what is a bump in a raise that you might get after a year on the job? It might be like 3% and you, you might get that, you might not. And you do a little, another bump the next year, another bump the next year, another bump the next year, and you'll work 40 years, but you'll get started in a home-based business. And if you're not rich in two weeks, this thing didn't work. Oh, I, oh, I tried those things before and it didn't work. Well, every one of you all, if you're married, you tried other, you dated other people. You didn't just date one person and then go, oh, that's it. I tried that, that didn't work. I'm never doing that again. No, you date somebody else. You date somebody else, you date somebody else. Well, in this business, it's about when you start and it's kind of like a baby, right? Like how many of you all have kids? And when you have kids, the kids will start to watch you because what do kids start doing? You know, first off, they start to crawl, right? First off, you're like so excited. They rolled over. Oh my gosh, they rolled over. That was so amazing. And you're like, you know, <coughs> building them up. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. You're so smart. You're so this. And you're telling your kids this. And all they did is freaking roll over in the bed, right? And then... And then they start doing other things like, oh my God, they said a word. Like you didn't go, damn it, you're three years old and you're not talking in full sentences yet. You suck. No, you love on that kid. And you basically, you know, you're watching them grow and you're not upset with them because they're not doing everything their first year. It takes a while. Well, the business is the same way. And we're babies when we get started in this. And when we first start off, we are what we call unconsciously incompetent, which means we don't know what we don't know. Kind of like your kid. They don't know that they don't know that they can't drive a car. They don't realize when they're, you know, they're, they're crawling around. What happens, they start to look around and they're like, wait a minute here. All right. I have these two little sticks under me. And they have those two sticks, but they're walking on those sticks and I'm sitting here crawling, like what in the world's going on here? So what happens, they start to have an awareness. And what that is called is consciously incompetent. So they go from not knowing that they don't know, just like we do in the business. And then they go to knowing that like, wait a minute, I'm, I mean, they're walking, they have legs, I, I have legs, I should be able to walk too. So then what do they do? They start to, they, they crawl up, and I know, come on parents, you know what it's like, and they grab onto that table, and they stand up, and they, they're holding on the edge, and they're doing this, and they're, 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 they're stumbling, and then they're looking down at their feet because they realize like, wait, these things are working, like they, they're holding me up, like woo! And then they like go to try to take one step away, boom, and they fall on their face, right? But what do we do? Do we tell them, oh my gosh, why can't you walk, kid? You suck. No, you're going, oh my gosh, you're so cute. You're this, you're that. And you're just all excited. The most amazing thing in the world because they're now becoming consciously competent, where they're starting to recognize that they have these legs and they're like, hey, I'm gonna walk on those things too. So then what happens is, is they're holding on to the table and they're holding themselves up and, and, and what they're doing is they're thinking about it. When was the last time you thought about walking? Like you don't think about it. It's because you're unconsciously competent. So when we get started in the business, we have to be there to not let our people fall, to be that table for them, to hold them up. And how do we do that? we pour belief into them. We pour belief into them just like you would pour belief into your kids. You can do it. You can stand on those sticks, kid, right? And, and we're, we're excited to watch them walk. Well, in the business, it's the same thing. But they have to realize, one, that they don't know what they don't know. Because when they get started, they're unconsciously incompetent. They've never done this kind of business. So then we start to bring awareness to them. So they start to become consciously co incompetent to where now they realize that, oh my gosh, I don't know anything. Wait, so why am I supposed to say the happy coffee that everyone's talking about? Well, let me explain. 
because that's called social proof. It's a tool of influence. It communicates with people's subconscious mind. I know you think it sounds silly, but the reason why we say the happy coffee that everyone's talking about, because if we talk about people and are people gonna link themselves with most people or least people? They automatically link themselves with most people. So if we say the happy coffee that everyone's talking about, what's gonna happen is they're gonna ask you what is that versus if you were like, hey, have you heard of happy coffee? They might go, no. But if you say, have you heard about the happy coffee that everyone's been talking about? Their subconscious mind goes, wait a minute, everybody's talking about it? I don't know anything about that. Why don't I know anything about that? I wanna know about that. And they subconsciously wanna know more. And, and Jenny's saying with enthusiasm, yes. If you say it with enthusiasm and your excitement, that's why step one is drink coffee and be happy. Well, guess what? If you're Eeyore and you're not happy, nobody wants to know about your happy coffee that's not working on you. So you need to be happy. So there's a thing called a smile. And it's so easy that you can actually do that. And people are just like, what are you smiling at? Have you heard about the happy coffee everyone's been talking about? Oh my gosh, guys, it's really that simple. So as you start to have an awareness of why do we say things certain ways? Now you are becoming consciously incompetent. That means that you realize that you don't know. So now you're telling me so where you can become consciously competent. So we've been talking a little bit about different personality styles and stuff. And we talked about, you know, going and practicing that with your family members and figuring out, are they auditories? Are they kinesthetics? Are they visuals? Are they reds, blues, yellows, greens? Guys, you don't need to know this stuff. But the more you have an awareness, the more you have you become consciously competent where you're thinking about it and you're doing it and you're working on getting better and better and better where you're working on it. What ha happens is, is you just become unconsciously competent. So it's, it's funny, like I screw myself up if I make notes, right? So I get on this call and I go what I call my pastor calls it just living in spirit, in the moment, to where I'm not thinking about stuff. I come from the heart and I talk about whatever I feel. Well, guys, years ago, I couldn't do this. Like, I've, I, I have so much content that I poured into my brain over the last 20 years that I can jump in front of a room at any point. I could basically off a, a whim. We did an opportunity Zoom the other day. And we had hackers in there putting all kinds of crazy stuff in the comments. And I mean, it was crazy. And the old me or whatever would have been all distracted. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Blah, blah. But because when you're doing something for any length of time, guys, you get good at it. And you become unconsciously competent, which means you don't know that you know. In other words, you you become competent at things without thinking about it. For instance, driving. When was the last time you thought about it? Like when you get over, the blinker goes on. You don't have to think about it. Like when was the last time you thought about how do I get home from work? Like don't you already know how to get home from work? How many times have you gotten home from work and don't remember driving home from work? Like you were thinking about other stuff. You didn't even think about it. And the next thing you know, you're in your driveway and you're like, oh, shoot. I wanted to pick up this at such and such and I totally forgot and you drove all the way home. It's because you're unconsciously competent in driving a car now. And, and just like our babies, they become unconsciously competent and they start to realize they don't know. Now they're consciously competent and they're, they're watching their feet and they're doing the whole whatever. That same kid, they don't go like, oh my gosh, look at that Escalade. Wow, 22 rims, mm, that's awesome. Oh, that has a new uh, whatever tire, right? Like a kid doesn't know that stuff. But if you talk to a motorhead that loves that kind of stuff, they know exactly what you're talking about. They're like, oh yeah, that's such and such, that car's this, that, whatever. Consciously, I mean, that's unconscious competence. So as you start to learn how to walk, as you start to learn how to run your business, you basically don't have to think about it but it comes from practice. It comes 
from doing it over and over and over and over to where it just happens. Like, you know, we don't have to think about, like you should have your story down of how to share your story to where, boom, you don't have to think about it. Now, what you do wanna do is have an awareness of who you're talking to and know what parts of your story you're gonna connect with somebody and what might not. And start to pay attention to, like if they said what excites them about the product, use that part of the story that you can have a tool because people like people like themselves. So have a bridge, similar stories. So guys, I have a 20 year network marketing story. When I share that story, I share based on who I'm talking to. So sometimes I might talk about when I got started. Sometimes I might talk about just the last couple of years. Some, it all depends. I match and mirror my story to who I'm talking to. So what that boils down to is awareness. Again, having awareness of who you're talking to. So we are in the last week of the month, right? We are basically right here at the very end of the month. So let's talk about some of the things that we should be doing right now in closing the month. Number one is who do we have on our team that's close to? There's gonna be people in the team that are close to a rank. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find those people and we're gonna ask them if they want our help. And what does that mean when basically we want, do you want my help? Well, we're gonna be there for them that if they need help either prospecting or making calls or, or having any connect calls, like I know there's some uh, group in the team that we're digging down and finding there's people that came on board. They might not have had, a, had welcome calls, right? So we're digging down and we're finding out who are those people that did not have a welcome call. And then we're getting back into why did they get started? What do they want from this? Again, it's about awareness. It's about paying attention to who we have on board. I talked to a young lady earlier today. Her name is Kelly. And basically, you know, just being able to have an income that could help pay for private school for her was a huge thing. She got started this month, already has 15 customers. She's gotten cab bonuses. She's, you know, she's hitting all the things, boom, boom, boom. She had no idea. She just loved the way she felt on the coffee and then realized like, oh my gosh, like this is so easy. I should share this with other people. She said her coworkers are noticing a difference in her and they're asking, what's going on with you? You've been totally different. You've been more fun. You've been more exciting. Well, have you heard about the happy coffee everyone's been talking about? And then boom, and that's, she's just sharing it. And then what it's allowed her to do is now start to dream and start going, you know what? More is possible. Because guys, this is the reality. People on their job, we talk 40, 40, 40, right? They're, they can only make so much money on a job. If you're trading hours for dollars, and I'm gonna be very clear, I'm not knocking jobs. But if you're working a job and, and you're getting paid for, for basically hourly wage, you can only make as much money as you have time. What I love about this business is you can leverage your time. Robert Kiyosaki said wealthy people get wealthy a few ways. He goes, um, he said, see a lot of people, employees, they work for the system, right? So they work for the system. And then you have self-employed people that they are the system, right? Like, so if you are a grass cutter and you cut grass or whatever, you have a business, like a plumber or an air conditioned guy or whatever, like you are the system, like you're self-employed. Hey, great. It's better than being the employee side because you can work harder and make more money. He said, but see wealthy people work from other people's efforts, other people's ideas and other people's money. And he goes, the goal is, is to get yourself out of that E range, which is the employee, and put yourself in the business owner and investor range. So what does that look like? Guys, in this business, we could be self-employed and we can go out and get a bunch of customers and we can make a great income. And it's better than just a normal job because 
you get paid monthly on every person that orders month after month after month a residual income. The other beautiful part about it is that you can buy a system. $49 or $99, I don't even know what it is anymore. Um, $99, you could buy an affiliate program and you bought a system that you can leverage and become a broker in our company and go out and build a huge income. And what does that look like? As a business owner, you're able to one, use other people's efforts. Because now when other people are getting customers, you're getting paid on your customers, you're also getting paid on their customers. The other thing is, is you didn't use your money, you used other people's money because they invested into the business, so they use their money and that you're able to leverage that as well. And then what happens as you start to build a portfolio, a business that keeps paying you month after month after month, then what it allows you to do is to have money to invest. For the first time in our life, we've been able to invest in the multiple different things where even though I made a six figure income prior to getting sick, I didn't have enough, basically, I didn't have investments that were paying me. And it, over a two year period, all that money was gone. And I found myself in debt, period. Where now we've been able to invest, we've been able to do different things. And we've focused in on the B and the I of the, the cash flow quadrants. We're out of that employee, we're out of the self employed, we're business owners that are able to also invest. So we're, the, we're in the B and the I. Uh, quadrants of what Robert Kiyosaki talks about in cash flow quadrants. So with that, right now in closing the month, you want to be finding out who are your people that are close to certain ranks. So in there, in the back office, you can go look and search people's names. And you can start finding out. And, and if you don't have a huge team, it's, it's fairly easy where you can just start tracking where your numbers are coming from. And if you start seeing people that are doing things, one of the things I'll tell you that Ricky does that he is amazing at is he will sit there and he goes and he digs down into the group and he sees where any kind of numbers are coming from. And then he goes and finds that person on Facebook and then he's sending them messages. And the next thing you know, he's connecting them also with their leaders and all that and gets in these threads where he starts pouring into these people and pouring gas on the fire. So guys, in this business, it's way easier to pour gas on a burning fire than it is to raise the dead. So he doesn't go and look at the people that have no numbers and go, you can do more, go do more, go, you know, whatever. No, he's finding where the fires are and then he's pouring gas on the fire. So in closing the month, what I would be doing right now is digging in through your group and find out where the fire is and then go pour gas on it. And if there is no fire, start one, start a fire. Guys, we have people right now that are praying for something in their life. They're praying for an opportunity like this. They're praying for a company that has what we have. They're praying for something, a product that we have. Guys, with what we have coming at convention and what we have coming this week, you guys are gonna be absolutely enamored. Like right now is the time for you to start lighting some freaking fires. And because there are gonna be people that will come from miles to watch a big fire burn. But you have to be responsible for lighting that fire. You have to be responsible for being that energy. And it starts off with you. So we started this whole call off with it's all about mindset and your mindset, your belief system is what is going to attract other people. And the reason why we talk about plugging in to these calls is because just like the battery in your phone, I'm looking at my computer battery is getting low. And if I don't go plug this thing in, the battery is going to die and then it's worthless. Well, every single one of you all have an electrical charge in you as well. Every single one of you all have a fire, a, a energy. And if you let that fire die, so does your dream. 
your dream dies. That's why it's so important for you to plug in to these calls and plug in to the trainings and plug in even to the, the opportunity Zooms. Because when you get off of those and you hear the stories, you're like, oh, hell no. I'm not letting everybody else go build this thing and me not do it. Like these people, she just paid. She's basically her husband didn't have to use his income to pay the bills. And she was able to do it. Oh no, I'm doing that too. And what it does is believe, it builds your certainty. It, be, it builds your belief. But when you stay unplugged and you're not hearing that stuff, your dream dies just like the battery on your phone. It's so important to plug in. It's so important to plug into these calls. It's so important to plug into the, to the uh, Saturday morning trainings. It's so important to plug into the Thursday night calls that different leaders do to hear a different perspective. Guys, this call is all about mindset. But on the, on the, on the calls on Saturdays and on Thursdays, it's nuts and bolts. It's, it's different things and everyone needs different little nuggets, right? Combination lock goes one way and it goes the other way. So on Monday night, you're, you're getting your mindset stuff straight because if your mindset isn't right, then guess what? You're not going to go do the activity. So then now you got to, all right, so now my mindset's right. You still need to know how to fly the plane. You know, like guys, you know, I know I, there's a one side where we say, just go do the thing and you'll have the power and go do it. But if you have a 747 and I put you in the, in the, in the driver's seat and say, go fly the thing, you know, basically you're going to crash and burn. You got to work on a little bit of skill set. Well, our skill set is so simple here that you can do it. It's four steps. Everybody can do it. It's four steps. So with that, you, you have to make sure your people are doing the four steps because you throw them in the cockpit of that 747, they're going to crash and burn. So we have to, one, you have to have the positive mindset, but positive mindset's not gonna fly the plane, right? You still gotta learn some skill set along with it. And yes, what I love about our system is it's so simple that anybody can do it, but what we're also teaching you is little nuggets to keep sharpening your ax, to sharpen your ax, to sharpen your ax. Because if you've ever tried to cut down a tree with a dull ax, it sucks. You just hitting, you're hitting, you're hitting, and nothing's happening. But you just sharpen that ax a little bit, and that sucker will cut right down through the tree. So that's what these calls are about, are sharpening your ax to where you can cut down the tree easier, to where you become consciously competent to where you become unconsciously competent where you don't have to think about it anymore i don't have to think if i'm doing a prospect call like oh let me think about what they're saying let me listen to what they're saying let me anchor in what they're it just happens it just does it i don't have to think about it anymore i hear the things that they're saying and i automatically know where to go instead of hearing myself talk about all the things I want to talk about. I talk about what they want to talk about. So that's why we're teaching you these little skill sets about personalities and all this stuff to help you sharpen your ax to bring your business to the next level. Guys, with what we have coming for, for almost three years, we've been, we've been selling a vision of what we're going to create, that we're going to be that change in the industry that we're gonna be that, that company that's gonna be different. Guys, the things we've been selling are coming to fruition. This company is the company to be in. It wasn't when we got started and we did it anyway. And we've created the company that we've all dreamed of. We've created that company that we've dreamed in. We attracted the right people to the corporate side. We attracted what we're doing in the direction we're going, even with the products and everything and the branding and everything that's happening is all happening to create the company that is your legacy company. But it's up to you to believe that. It's up to you to take action. It's like, you know, I know we have a lot of Christians and they're like, well, God's gonna take care of me. Faith without works is dead, guys. You can't just pray 
and, and magically everyone's going to, you know, join your team without going to work. You know, you can pray and, and he will definitely help you. But if you don't go to work, it's like that story where, you know, the guy, basically the flood's coming, hurricane, what it, Marco's coming, right? It's supposed to be coming here. There's nothing happening. So hurricane Marco is coming, right? And basically there's areas down here that are mandatory evacuation. And there's some people that decide, nope, we're staying. Well, and they're, they're, they could go, well, I'm praying God's going to take care of me. And then basically a, a, a fire truck comes and they're like, hey, guys, you got to go. It's mandatory evacuation. We're here to come get you. Like, come on, jump on the truck. Let's get out of here. And nope, they don't come. Next thing you know, basically it starts raining. It starts to flood. And then basically, you know, the guy's like on, on his roof and then the boat comes. And the guy, oh, no, God's going to take care of me. I'm praying. It's going to happen. I'm good. The boat comes. The guy stays, right? Then, basically, he's up in a tree because the water's so deep, right? Because we're in a bowl. And, and it, everything's filled up. Dude's up in a tree. And a helicopter comes to try to get this guy out of the tree. Oh, I've, I've been praying. God's going to take care of me. The bottom line is, Dude passes away and he goes up to God and he's like, God, I believed you were going to help me. I believed you were going to be that one. Everything was going to be fine. And he goes, listen, dummy, I sent in a fire truck after you. I sent a boat after you. I sent a helicopter after you. And you just saying, I'm praying. <laughs> the bottom line is you have to take action. Just like it doesn't happen friend. without action. So with that, guys, your business can be anything that you want, but you have to get in the boat. You have to get on the, the truck. You have to get in the helicopter and you have to go freaking do something. You have to go take action. That's all there is to it. You can believe, you can think, you can pray, you can do all that stuff, but faith without works is dead. You have to go to work, guys. You have to be ready to go to work we have things coming out guys that you are going to regret if you don't take all out massive action because we can literally change the world with what we have what we have coming and and what it is is to come come later we have some amazing things that we have people that have been beta testing and probably i'm not supposed to be telling you all this stuff but i'm telling you it's time to go to work and let's go make this thing happen everybody have an awesome night Take care, guys. I'll unmute everybody. Thank you. Chris, that was the next Thank level you. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you.